So today I wanted to take advantage of this beautiful weather. It's so nice out here and um, there's just a ton of birds that I don't know if you guys can hear in the background and I'm by this beautiful pond and um, this is where I was filming when I invited you guys to join me in my favorite place to read. So this is my favorite little local park that I like to come to. There are benches everywhere or I could just kind of um, sit in the grass if I wanted to. Right now it's kind of wet in the grass so I don't feel like sitting but um, do a book review on the second book of the Embrace series by Jessica Shervington. This is called Entice and I'm going to get um, Emblaze, the third one, real soon hopefully so I wanted to go ahead and do a review before I read the next book because I'm just terrible with series like that. I will get so excited about the next book that comes out that I'm going to read all of them and then I never go back to continuing my reviews. Kind of like the Mortal Instruments series. Um, I finished all the ones that are released a long time ago but I've only reviewed the first three books even though there are five out right now. So I need to get back on that. Um, <clears throat> Nothing drives me crazier than the sound of city life interfering with nature sounds. I don't really have my voice today so um, just bear with me. I'm going to do my best to get through this review because I really want to do this for you guys. So um, if you have not read Embrace, the first book, I suggest you turn off this video and read it because you are missing out if you have not read it. Um, and I don't want to give anything away for those of you who intend on reading it but have not gotten around to it yet. So this story picks up exactly where the first one left off and so now Violet has embraced. She is now a Grigori and she's working together with the rest of the Grigori group, I guess. Um, and Lincoln is her partner. The premise of the story is that Phoenix, who she sort of had an attraction with, not sort of, she definitely had an attraction to Phoenix and she had some history with him. Um, he is their enemy and he is after these sacred scriptures that are really important to the Grigori and if Phoenix or the Exiles were to get a hold of these scriptures that would tilt the balance between good and evil. So the goal here is for the Grigori, Violet and her friends, they are um, basically on a race with the Exiles across the world to Jordan to get to the scriptures before Phoenix does. To make things more difficult for Violet and her friends, there is a traitor among the Grigori, and I'm not going to say who, but this makes it easier for Phoenix and his people to remain one step ahead of Violet and her friends because they have someone feeding him information. I must say that there is a strong sense of character development, especially for Violet. She isn't as whiny and um, complaining like she truly has embraced who she is. She's not complaining and um, feeling sorry for herself the way she was in the first book which I found that a little bit irritating about her but she's a lot better now. This is my favorite kind of book where there's a lot of action and there's also some romance in the mix so um, I, I wish I could have seen a little more growth between Violet and Lincoln. I feel like a lot of the time you just kind of experience Violet's frustration and jealousy toward Magda. What is my hair doing? Um, she's, she's jealous of the time that Lincoln is spending with her and the information that he's sharing with her. It's quite obvious that Lincoln is withholding information from Violet because he feels like that is what he has to do to protect her. But Violet is sort of immature in that way. She feels like he's keeping secrets from her and that he trusts Magda over her. And what really bothers her is that there is a rule between, there's a rule that um, Grigori can't be in a relationship with their partners. Um, with the exception of two other Grigori in the story, um, they're soulmates, but they have this metaphor where they're um, sort of mirrors to each other, that you're kind of reflecting each other, but when one is killed because they're always battling and their lives are always in danger. Um, what happens when you have no reflection? What happens to the other partner? And you know, I can't really get into it too much without giving 
a lot of way. You just sort of have to read the story to understand there really is a reason why th this love between partners is forbidden. And that is something that Lincoln and Violet struggle with. She doesn't like that Lincoln is spending time with Magda because technically they are allowed to date. They are allowed to be together because they're not partners. Violet is in a tough position where she has to decide whether it's good for them or not, whether it's worth it or not to be with Lincoln. Scenes you can pretty much tell that Phoenix still has feelings for Violet. He does care for her. Um, at the same time, he's pretty cruel. He still has um, a pretty strong grasp on her because when she was dying in the first book, he was able to heal her, but just as well, he can take that away. He can undo his healing on her and have her killed at any time. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship between the two. One character that I feel that is overlooked in this story is Steph, Violet's best friend. Steph is not Grigori, she's not in exile, she's, she's a regular human being. Um, and she's her best friend and usually in these young adult fantasy novels there's always a best friend that the protagonist confides in and Steph she's not nosy like the typical best friend and she she's so smart she catches on really quickly but she doesn't brag about being smart or anything but she does a lot of research for Violet and the rest of the Grigori and without her they would not have accomplished a lot of the things that they ended up accomplishing and you know she is a bridge between Salvatore and the rest of the group because she speaks Italian and he only speaks Italian so she works as their translator oh my gosh there's a duck that's walking toward me anyway um, so she is their translator and she does um, without stuff the Grigori wouldn't have been able to bust their traitor. Not like um, any of the other characters, I think she's really important and I think she should be made um, as an honorary member of the Grigori. If you have not checked out this series, you have to give it a shot. Like I said, you are missing out if you have not read these. Um, I must say that when I first picked up the books and I read the inside cover, the description of the book seemed a little bit juvenile, the way that it was written, and so I was kind of hesitant to get started um, reading this book because I had just finished um, Hush Hush which I really really enjoyed and I was worried that this might be kind of a not so great version of Hush Hush if you know what I mean but this is totally different and you know I think the description doesn't do it justice the, the way the story is written because the story itself is written very beautifully and I was just captivated from the first chapter. So give it a shot and let me know what you think if you've read it. And if not, um, I hope you do check it out and I hope this video was helpful to you and I will talk to you guys soon. I have a book haul video coming up soon. I just need Amazon to hurry up and send their order to me. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever been this excited for my books to arrive and Amazon needs to hurry up because I have been waiting impatiently and I will do a book haul video as soon as I get the books and it's kind of a big one. I hope you guys stick around and wait for that video. Thank you for watching. Bye!